I did a video recently on um, just an intro on iron deficiency anemia. Um, <clears throat> my daughter left uh, recently to go back to Arequipa, Peru. She's on a um, Fulbright scholarship to continue her studies of iron deficiency in um, kids in Peru and the ability of uh, supplementation to solve that problem. <laughs> um, most of us think of that as a third world issue or a developing countries issue. Um, it's not. It's also a developed countries issue as well. Between 2 and 7% uh, of kids in Western Europe have iron deficiency. And iron deficiency doesn't have to cause anemia to cause disability, cognitive decline. Let's go back and talk about some of the basics of iron um, and the anemia associated with it. And then we'll get a little bit deeper into the... Um, the cognitive decline business. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, to get back very, very basic, um, iron is what makes us, um, gives us a major advantage over uh, fungi and mold in terms of um, energy. We will get like 36 ATP. ATP is an energy unit, adenosine triphosphate, but it's an energy unit out of a molecule of glucose, whereas mold only gets what, two? Five? I think it's two. Um, <clears throat> mold and fungus. So for example, when uh, a mold or fungus turns grape juice into wine, what it's doing is breaking that uh, glucose into half and then or a thirds, uh, six carbon unit into two carbon units to make ethanol. Um, ethanol is just a starting point for a lot of humans, um, <clears throat> but energetically we can pull a lot more uh, energy units out of that. Now why does iron do that? Again, it carries oxygen. So iron is very, very powerful. But like most things that can bring a powerful benefit, it also brings a powerful risk. We know that from um, people that have insulin resistance and diabetes, especially folks that have heptoglobin 2-2. Heptoglobin is responsible for taking uh, iron that has spilled from red blood cells that have gotten old, cracked, and spilled the uh, hemoglobin out into the, to the artery. If you have haptoglobin 2, 2, it does not pull that hemoglobin out of the artery wall as well. Guess what happens? If you um, leave iron sitting in the artery wall, it does what it, uh, it, it does what oxygen does. Oxygen oxidizes things. And what's the other word for oxygen? Oxidiza oxidation. Rust. Iron. Uh, in the heme molecule, which is in the hemoglobin molecule, will burn our arteries if it just sits out there. So that's, if you have more interest in the haptoglobin issue, again, a different health issue, much more for uh, the other end of life, for middle-aged folks. Whereas uh, iron and heme are big, big issues for, um, for kids. And we'll talk about that in just a few minutes because Kids tend to outgrow their source of iron, and it's difficult to get enough iron into kids. Again, and I'll say it once, twice, three times, multiple times, that underlines the importance of iron uh, supplementation for kids. So, <clears throat> here's a, a, a different article. Um, it's from the Journal of Nutrition. Uh, December of 08. It's about why our iron deficiency is important in infant development. So infants who, ex who experience iron deficiency in the first six months of life are likely to experience persistent effects that alter the function in adulthood. And again, we're talking about two to six percent in the developed countries. This gets up to 50 percent in um, developing countries like uh, 
Côte d'Ivoire, uh, Ivory Coast in Africa. So as you can imagine, you start multiplying these numbers out. Two billion people with uh, anemia in the world and over half of them with iron deficiency anemia. So that's one billion people with a major problem with this. Not only a problem with energy, but a major problem with neural development, cognitive development. Um, central nervous system uh, development, morphology, neurochemistry, and bioenergetics. Um, Repletion efforts appear to help, but there's a significant timing component. If you supplement too late, it's too late for the neurodevelopment. Uh, where does this happen in terms of distribution? It happens in uh, myelination of white matter. You know, myelin is the sheath that it's like we, the, uh, the nerves are like electric cords. Electric cords have to have insulators or the electric uh, component disperses elsewhere. That's what the myelin sheath is. Um, monoamine uh, oxidation or monoamine uh, metabolism in the striatum. The striatum is another part which I won't get into because I want to mention the last one, the hippocampus. Remember the importance of the hippocampus? That's what we measure when we're looking at um, assessment of um, cognition as we go through cognitive decline. We do a hippocampal volume issue. So the hippocampus is critical to memory and um, absence of iron in early developmental uh, phases causes damage to that hippocampus. Just a comment. Because this is such a big issue in the entire world, especially the, de the developing world, one of the major resources, if you're interested in looking this up, is the World Health Organization. Now, a couple of other uh, points about iron deficiency. This is from the uh, Journal of Nutrition, uh, oh, Neuropsychiatric uh, Diseases. And um, it's talking about micronutrient deficiencies, especially uh, iodine and iron are big issues for cognition. Since this is a, pardon the, uh, the buzzing here, since this is a psychiatric journal, they go into a little bit more depth in terms of what are the types of cognitive impact. Uh, attention span, intelligence, sensory perception, intelligence again, emotion, uh, emotions and behavior. So a lot of big issues in terms of uh, cognition. Um, just more uh, points and repetitions that this is not just a third world or uh, I think there's a problem with using third world with a developing country's uh, issue. It's a, it's a U.S. and Western Europe issue. It's an issue for you, your family, basically, no matter where you live. Um, how does it do it? It appears to be uh, impacting the brain mitochondria. Now, do we know deeper what's going on in terms of the brain mitochondria during development? I don't. I haven't found the details on that yet, and I don't know if it's known. If you do know, please uh, comment um, and let the rest of us know, and maybe tell me some places I can look this up. Um, <clears throat> Here's a very good point. Iron deficiency, even without iron deficiency anemia, can cause cognitive problems. Uh, 20 years ago, iron deficiency affected over 45% of children in, uh, in developing countries as a whole, less than five years old, and over 7% in developed countries. Now it's still between 2 and 7%. So this has been very, very difficult to deal with. And again, why? Uh, one of the reasons has to do with, uh, it's not that supplements don't work, it's that it's hard to get kids to take them. It's hard to get moms to make kids take them, and if the mom's really focused, the kid still can often get away with that without doing it. Um, <clears throat> actually, I'm going to skip over that article for sake of time. Just a couple of other quick points. This is a point about... Um, parasites as opposed to uh, other types of uh, iron deficiency. 
And as you can see from this uh, video, in a lot of countries, it's parasites are an issue. It's a multifactorial problem. This is an interesting um, image I just wanted to share. It has to do with this whole thing of the kids and their ability to, um, and what's happening in terms of concentration of iron. Remember I, I said kids are outgrowing their iron stores? So this, is, this timeline shows kids in second trimester, third trimester, birth, six months, 12 months, and 24 months. The actual study here had to do with uh, the impact of diet. Both of these uh, groups, the, study, the control arm and the study arm, were getting iron supplementation. So you see some improvement in iron concentration here. But this uh, group also had a better uh, diet, which they were researching. The point that I wanted to make, though, was this bump right here. So at second trimester, you're, the child's just cooking along. At third trimester, they really start to pull in a lot of iron from the mother. Then they're born, and they're not getting much iron that way. It's basically on a, um, on a uh, mother's milk diet, and evidently they have a hard time getting uh, iron through that. If I'm wrong on that, please let, let me know, and we'll do some more research. But meanwhile, what's going on, as I said, the kid, the child is outgrowing their source, their supply of iron. Then we start adding uh, diet back. And um, that's the reason that iron supplementation is so important. Kids depend on that to uh, support their growth. And it's not just anemia, it's cognitive development. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned in an earlier video that uh, basically they've shown decreased um, synapse time, in other words, decreased speed of the nerves. This is in the nerves of a lab uh, model, a rat, and it's, uh, they were able to measure it with the nerves associated with hearing. Hearing has a couple points. Number one, it's a, a, um, a marker for development of other nerves, but number two, Hearing is a major component of um, neural development um, and uh, cognitive uh, disability. I'm not going to go through all these. Again, I can't believe that I've made a video on iron deficiency go on for over 12 minutes. I, anyhow, here's the point behind this, uh, this video, or these lists. These are just lists showing how much this issue has been researched. Uh, we know it's a huge problem. We know that there are multiple reasons for iron deficiency. We know that iron deficiency, even without um, anemia, causes cognitive decline. What we don't know, is, we also know for sure, this, again, the studies have been done, that supplementation helps. What we don't know is how to get those kids to take that supplementation, how to get it to them early enough and effectively enough. Thank you for your interest.